So not only does that affect the person they direct it at, but that actually affects the, the, the person sending it too. Because that's a whole lot of effort and negative energy that you have to harness to do that. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Frank. Yes. If you're under attack, like you were just saying, or an attachment mm -hmm. from paranormal, if you remove yourself, does that attachment or that attack go away? Sometimes, uh, but other times no. Other times it will follow you around. So even if you were to remove yourself from the room or the location, it would still... Yeah. A lot of times, Rich, you don't even have to be in a haunted place. You could be <coughs> in your own home. And if somebody is directing this at you, it's, there's no place you can hide from it. Um, I had a, a case probably about two years ago. And the guy called me up. He says, you know, I got this going on, this going on. He lost his job, uh, got behind on child support, so he lost his driver's license. Couldn't get a job without a driver's license. Um, just everything that could go wrong for this guy did, you know. Um, and, and as soon as I talked to him, you just knew, just from listening, that, okay, yeah, I got the yes, thought for him. We had to remove it from him. Okay, and it was not as easy as I thought it would be, but we got it. Within a month, he got a new job. His life is going, it's has completely turned around. Um, and again, it's just simple energy. It's movement of energy, okay, or removal of energy. So, and, you know, in Italian, we have a thing called malosh. Okay, and um, you never want to give that it's like if you're staring at admiring a baby, the old superstition is you have to touch that baby, otherwise you're going to give him a lunch. Okay? And that's an unintentional one. Okay? But there is the intentional word with the evil eye. Okay? Well, that's just where I'm at now. It's the unintentional. Okay? It's the same as the sender, uh, same as the intentional, but the sender is unaware of what they're doing. They usually have intense negative emotions toward the victim. The attack can be happening during the exchange of harsh words and heated moments. The attacking energy is released from one person to the other, and it can remain with them until the energy is properly uh, cleared. OK, 
Okay, so again, in the heat of the moment, Rich, you and I are having an argument, and I'm getting hot on it, and I'm yelling, and you're yelling. Okay, this is, again, creates this negative energy ball, which starts to attract other negative energy. Okay, and, you know, whether it sticks with me, whether it sticks with you, or whether it sticks with both of us, it's unintentional. It's not directed at either, but it's directed at both. And then it just grows until you, you do something about it. Okay, paranormal miasms from ourselves. We can draw negative energies, entities, spirits into ourselves without influence whatsoever from external sources. Prolonged states of anger, rage, resentment, bitterness, vindictiveness, many types of fears will draw and attract these negative energies. Um, you know, it's normal to be angry, it's normal to be fearful. These are all fine in normal reactions. It's when you have that prolonged, okay? You ever know anybody who is just so angry all the time? Okay, and it's, no matter what you did, they were always angry, okay? The, the, they're the glass is uh, half empty kind of people, very negative. Um, violence of all types, physical, emotional, mental, a uh, very powerful draw for the dark and negative types of energy. Certain entities are attracted to certain energetic vibrations, and once they find someone that emanates that vibration, they latch on and uh, they feed off that person. They encourage more bad behavior from them. You know, and, and, and you see this all the time. People who are, are just so abusive and, and mean and mean-spirited. And, you know, and, and if you catch them in a good moment, they say, well, you know, I know it's wrong, but I can't stop. There's something in me that just drives me to do it. And this is what it is. Drug and alcohol abuse also draws in uh, these types of ener energies. Okay, when we become intoxicated, our guard comes down. This is why they always say, don't drink before you investigate. You know you're going into a haunted location, it's always a bad thing because it, it, alcohol will lower your vibrational level to a point, okay? In moderation, it's fine and, and you can handle it. But it's that, you know, over drinking, drinking to excess, the drinking every day, uh, same with the drugs, overall lowers your resistance too much and makes you an easy target. Protection, 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 okay? So, how do we raise our vibrational levels? Okay, become conscious of your thoughts. Uh, everything you think and say and feel becomes reality. Okay, powerful statement. If you think it, you will be it. So, control your thoughts. If you're angry, if you're an angry driver, first place to start. And I know I used to be that guy driving down, fist flying out the window, you know, telling everybody they're number one. And that was a hard thing for me to give up. But I knew it was bad behavior, and I knew it was affecting me. So if somebody cut me off, my first response was to yell at them, let's stop. And I'd say a little prayer that they get to where they're going safely. Okay, and at first it was like, God, get them to where they're going. You know, and it was said with anger. But I kept repeating it. It's like anything else, it's like building a habit. You just gotta keep doing it, okay? And now I'm kind of peaceful, and I just, I joke, I laugh around, you can ask the, my, my family that wrote down with me, they'll know that I yell, but it's, it's a fun yell now, not intentional, okay? Find something beautiful and appreciate it, whatever it is, cat videos on Facebook, they're hysterical, <laughs> but that's, it laughter, laughter. You know, Reader Sai just so he said laughter is the best medicine. Laughter is the best medicine, both physically, spiritually, energetically. Okay. Um, be conscious of the food you eat. Okay. If you're, you know, and, it, and I got to laugh because I used to do it too when we'd go on investigations. We'd always have a bag full of, you know, candy and more candy and you know, sodas. And Garbage, okay? Sugar is not a clean fuel. Sugar gives you a burst, but sugar takes its toll on the body. 
um, yeah, you know, good, healthy proteins, uh, slow burning carbs, great pre investigation meals. Drink a lot of water, stay hydrated. Okay? And, and it's a simple thing. We all know that we all should be drinking at least eight glasses of water a day. But how many of us actually do that? Okay? Meditate. Okay? It's a simple thing, but it's a hard thing. Um, most people I know, mind never quiets down enough to meditate for very long periods of time. So that has to be like the first one. You have to just keep working at it. Okay? Time and time again. Be grateful. Okay? It's always good to set some goals. And, and one of them is, is gratitude. It's okay, I made another trip around the sun. I'm, I'm going to be grateful. I'm going to do something. You know, grateful for somebody. So and so is, uh, you know, coming. They're always good people. Hey, let me get my coffee. Gratitude. Uh, practice acts of kindness. Okay, simple little stuff. Hold the door open for people. Okay, help somebody carry their groceries. Acts of random acts of kindness go a long way. And uh, get your blood pumping. Okay, a little exercise. A little exercise is good. It creates uh, get good blood flow, healthy oxygenated blood. It raises our vibrational level. Okay, and my favorite way to raise your vibrational level is a hug. Okay. The touch of loved ones increases hemoglobin in the blood, which helps the body increase oxygen flow throughout the body, uh, including the heart and the brain. So, hugs. They're, they're, they're wonderful. Um, I hear rumors that Rich is a really good hugger. That I think everybody should give him a hug before they leave today. And that raises your vibrational level. No, Frank, but I know a guy. You know a guy? I know a guy. I know that guy. Okay. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Okay. It can only be changed from one form to another. Okay. So, I have a little example of this. Okay. We're familiar with this, K2. Okay. This is the, the really old one where I got to hold the button down and jam a penny in it. Okay, so in the cup, we have nothing until we start to move it. Okay, so we've taken the potential energy, and there's a magnet in here. It's a very, it's a 25,000 Gauss uh, neodymium magnet. So we've taken that potential energy <laughs> and just changed it. Okay, we didn't create it, we didn't destroy it. Okay, so right now we're going to change our energy. And I would like everybody to stand up. I want everybody to take a deep breath in and hold it. And let it out nice and slow. One, two, three, four. Okay, one more time. Fill your belly full of air like you're going to belt out a song. And let it out. One, two, three. Belly breathing relaxes you. Um, some of you literally watched your shoulders drop two inches when we did this, okay? Because this is what we do. We're uptight, we're thinking, we're good. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, we're we're here now. I'm gonna do this later, and our shoulders start to come up, and so we get that tension in our neck. So in, in my hand, the guy just literally watched you. Some of you, your shoulders just drop, and the expressions change on your face. It's kind of cool. 
Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a little short guided meditation. So again, I want you all to close your eyes. Okay. Relax and focus on your breathing. In your mind's eye, I want you to visualize a beautiful gold light. It's off in the distance. As you breathe, and you breathe deep, that light becomes closer and closer. When it gets close enough, you get up and you walk into the light. You let that light surround you. It hugs you with its warmth. You feel calm and relaxed, peaceful, protected. Every breath you take, you're breathing in more and more of this beautiful gold light. Until there's no room in you for anything else other than this gold light. As we walk in this light, we start to notice things around us. Whatever that personal thing is for you, whether it's a stream, whether it's a field full of straw, whether it's the ocean, we notice it. And we see it. We walk towards it. We stop. We just listen. We listen for the birds. We listen for the animals. We listen to the wind. listen for messages, whatever the universe wants to tell you, this is the place where it will tell you. You're calm and protected and surrounded by this gold light. you might feel the presence of a loved one. And it's okay and it's good. And if you don't, that's okay and it's good too. Some of us need to be alone and relaxed and surrounded with nothing but our thoughts. Bring some of that gold light back with us, that protection, that comfort, that healing. Back. So that was just a simple little guided meditation. Some of you might have felt nothing at all. Some of you might have gone to the ocean and relaxed and, and been where you needed to be. Okay, but that changes our energy. Your energy, the energy in this room has changed. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a device that is able to measure that other than our own issues. Thank you all for being here. Um, I should say on Twitter, I'm Dr. Spector. On Facebook, you can find me as Frank Sinelli or at the Vitamin Pharmacy. Uh, email drspector at yahoo.com. If you have questions, comments, uh, things you want to know more about, please feel free to reach out to me. And that's it. Okay. Questions? I do. Yes. 
You were talking about energies and positive energies attracting spirits, entities. We often talk in, in the ghost hunting field mm -hmm. about homes that are more welcome or more open or individuals who are more open to having experiences. Is that the kind of energy you're talking about? So we, we talk about People who are more open. People who are more, more open or more prone or to homes that have normal experiences. Or homes that have more activity because they're more, it's more open, they, the spirits feel comfortable there. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's, it's an energy thing. Okay? And, and again, it's, it's law of attraction. Um, if you have good energy, typically you're going to draw good energy in. If you're a good person, you end up surrounded with good people. Okay? And that's not by accident. That's the way it works. If they're not good people, they don't stick around you that long. Um, same in the spirit world. If you're a good person, and you have this good energy, yeah, typically you're, you're going to bring them in. Okay? Homes that are, okay, and again, we talk about different types of energy. And there are homes that are more prone to being haunted. Those are, you know, by the water, those with, um, the, the quartz in the, the foundation wall and, or in heavy limestone areas. So yeah, those, it's more of a, a, a like a conduit kind of thing as opposed to an energy that draws from that. Is that what you meant? Yes, yes. One more question. Yes. You talked about attachments. Yes. Can a positive or a good person get a negative attachment. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, um, you know, the, the, you open yourself up more to it if you're a negative person, if you're, you're angry all the time. So yeah, you're absolutely more open to it. You can do everything right, fresh, and still end up with a negative attachment. Okay, and, and again, that's that, it, it's almost like an opposites attract kind of thing. It's, it wants that energy. You're a high energy good person. And that's, it's going after that. Okay, it wants to bring you down. And, I, and, and, and again, one of my, my favorite theories is I'm a firm believer in the more potential you have to do good in this world, the stronger you're going to get attacked. Yes? Well, then quickly, sorry, what, what defense do you have against something like that? I mean, if you're, if you're trying to be a good person, a good nature person, well, you, you try to stack the odds in your favor, and most of the time it works. Okay, um, it, it's like anything else. The, it's, if you're, you're playing cards, okay, and you stack the deck, odds are you're going to win, right? You're stacking the deck. You stack the deck with, with protection, and good energy, being doing, you know, keeping high vibrational levels. Um, is that 100 percent? No. Okay, you stack the deck, there's still a chance you okay. uh, with, with, with your deck. I have countless people coming into me all the time and say, hey, I get everything right. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't you know, do this, and I eat healthy, and I still get sick. Sometimes it's luck to be drawn. Sometimes we go back now to that miasmatic kind of condition where you're more predisposed to it. So even though you're still doing everything right, there's still something deep within your DNA that's drawing this stuff in. Anybody else? Have you ever seen any ghosts when you were in the houses? Yeah. Seen, yeah. Yeah. It, it, was, it, was, it was after you had to get you or to just appear? Um, you know, it's, I've been doing this a long time. Um, there are things that you see that kind of go, huh, maybe that was, and there are things that you see that um, there's no denying. And, and through the years, it's been pushed, scratched, grabbed. Uh, I've had attachments, I've taken attachments off of people. Uh, it's, it's amazing. When it scratched you, was it, was it three? Yes. Three lines? Uh, it's, yeah, it seems like three coming right lines. down here, and one coming right across the rest. Mm -hmm. It looks exactly like the like when I watch them on TV. They all look like the Monster Energy logo. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking that. Yes, it's, it's, yeah, it, it looked like the Monster logo. Yeah. Um, 
And we were doing a clearing on a house. And uh, we kind of tracked everything down to this hideous painting. It was up in the hall. The dogs wouldn't, they had any drunk past that spot. They would not go past it. So we're doing the thing and I'm, um, with a friend of mine, and she's doing it. And I, basically, I was there as bait, okay, protection for her. So I'm there and I'm praying. And I'm getting knocked around. I'm a pretty big guy. Okay, it was all said and done. She bounded up into the painting. So I go down and I sit in the little kid's room. She looks at me. She says, you okay? I said, I'm okay. I definitely took a lot out of me. And I start rubbing. I said, my arm burns. And I roll my sleeve up. And sure enough, I had three. I'm right down here. One across the wrist. What was the painting? I don't remember. It was a copy of an actually a pretty famous painting. But when you look at it in detail, it was a little girl. She was sitting there in this you know, beautiful little dress. And but she looked, and her feet were all twisted. Okay. Uh, her hands were not that of a little girl. They were grotesque and hideous. But you really had to look at it, because you know, you first look at the painting, you see, okay, it's a little girl sitting on a rock doing something. Else. But when you actually started looking at it, it was, it was bad. So and I ended up taking that painting out of the house for the owner. But the second we bound it up, okay, we let the family back in, the dogs went running right up past that spot. You know, the, the kids were happy. So he took that painting out, and uh, I had to get rid of it. So I decided I'm going to burn it. Okay. Wouldn't catch on fire. Wow. I mean, it's canvas and paint. You'd think this would be easy to light. Wouldn't go. I finally had doused it with lighter fluid, got it burning. It sizzled like bacon. And I have that on video somewhere. It sizzled like bacon and it smelled like this horrible old lady perfume. The only way I could describe that. Somebody painted it, or was it a reproduction? If somebody painted it, and it was a friend of a friend of the great grandmother's who <clears throat> had sat in the mother's basement for years until the homeowner took it out and hung it up. The mother never liked it. She said, nah, it's really creepy. She just kind of kept it locked in the basement. How about kids fooling around with Ouija boards? Did you ever get in any of those houses? I've never been. I've heard stories about them. Yeah. Um, you know, the Ouija board, you take it for what it's worth. It's, it's, to me, it's no different from using the K2 meter. Okay, we're trying to get a response from the other side. So if the Ouija board is being used responsibly, okay, protection, prayers of protection, use it for good intent. Okay, you still never know what you're going to get. Well, even using these, you still never know what you're going to get. Okay, but again, like I said before, you, you try to stack the odds in your favor. So I'm, I'm not anti Ouija board. Not my go to because it's just cumbersome and, and time consuming. Uh, yeah. How about miasms? Anybody with problems from having dads or grandfathers who are Freemasons? Or, or in the clan. You know, that's an interesting concept. And, and, and yeah, I, I don't know of, of anything off the top of my head with that. But uh, yeah, that's worth looking into. Yes, any kind of secret society like that. Yeah. Because I heard that that would get curses on you. And, and you're saying you're getting up the alcohol. I watched a guy in this documentary, and he was saying that was the number one drug that those spirits were looking for was people. Drunk. Yep. Not pot, not coke, not nothing. They want drunk. That's the, that's what really. I, see, I would disagree with that. I, I would say any type of mind altering, whether it's, whether it's pot, whether it's beer, whether it's you know mm -hmm. whatever. Right. I, it, it's all in my head. It's all equal. It lowers lowers your and makes you more of a target. Makes you easier prey. You know, religious items great protection. Okay, if you have faith, there's one of my. One of my favorite lines from a movie is uh, the old movie Frank. Okay, had Roddy McDowell as this aged PV vampire slayer. Okay, and the, the kid moves in next to a vampire, reaches out to Roddy McDowell. Okay, so he comes and he's kind of just playing it off. The vampire shows up, so he pulls out a cross. 
the vampire, ah, no, no, no. He grabs it out of his hand and he throws it. He says, you have to have faith for that to work. Okay? Yeah. You have to have faith. And so it's, it's a symbol. It's a symbol that you believe in that through its spiritual nature and your faith in that bolsters that great protection. Whether it's St. Benedict's Medal, whether it's a, a cross or a crucifix or you know, whatever your belief system is. Yeah, there's no right or wrong to that. Yeah. Oh, Frank, I have a quick question. Um, I, I collect a lot of rocks and minerals and things like the, of that nature, and a lot of them, uh, the crystals have their own vibrations. Mm -hmm. uh, is, for someone that's a ghost hunter, is there any, do you uh, work with rocks at all, or do you? I, I do, yeah. Um, do you, jet, great protection. Jet, that yep. was my next question, was like, is there a mineral that works good for going on? Right? <laughs> No, jet. It's it, it, matter of fact. I just looked this up for somebody this, this past week, um, and there are a lot of, of different protection crystals, and it's what resonates best with you. Okay, and, and if you've been doing this a while, you, you you feel you're attracted to it. It's like, okay, yeah, jet would be the obvious choice, but this guy is screaming at me, okay? and that's what you got to go. You got to trust your gut with that, and, and trust how you feel with it. No, I have I have a, a quartz log in my office, okay, and uh, I have um, this woman that comes in who's been under attack for quite a while. She got in the office. We're there now. Again, we deal with holistic healthcare. We encourage people not to wear perfume because I deal with people who are very chemically sensitive. All of a sudden, the office gets filled with this perfumey smell. I mean, he, even I was reacting to it a little bit. Um, and this woman was being attacked. We took this to the quartz, right? The quartz log. And then I put the laser behind it. Instantly, cleared it out. I mean, it, it's, you know, I almost brought that tonight because that's something I had never done before. And I thought, in theory, this is going to work. In theory, this is wonderful. You know, we just charged the room. My headache went away. My sinuses cleared up. It's like, holy cow, this is wonderful. So yeah, crystals, right? I wish I knew more about them. Uh, I, I just have the knowledge to touch on them a little bit, enough to get myself in trouble. Yeah. So but now I know you're into it. You're the, uh, you're the, you're the go-to guy now. Yeah, answers. to her chagrin, I have uh, an entire room practically devoted towards uh, rocks. Yeah. So. Cool. The rock room. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, rock. Okay. Any other questions? Great. Well, thank you guys for, for listening. Thank you for letting me be here. Thanks again, Frank, for uh, journeying out from the great Poconos. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Don't forget uh, the third Monday of every month, 6 o'clock, same place, same time. Uh, you're going to ask me what's next month, and I'm going to tell you. I don't know. Um, February. Check. Thank you. <laughs> Just trying to help. Check uh, Ghost Hunters, or I'm sorry, ColeRegionGhost.com or uh, on our website or Cole Region Paranormal Team's Facebook page, and we'll have, within this next week, I'll have up the topic for next month. Um, and yeah, I'm going to get around to the Facebook page for for the paranormal night because it'll make things a whole lot easier than fighting with the emails. Uh, if you're new to being here and you want to be put on the email list, I have a clipboard over there with a white piece of paper. Just put your name and your email address. And what I'll do is I always send out a reminder about paranormal night and usually the flyer of what's going on in the next month. Which is there an event coming up for you for the team? For the team. 
for, um, are you guys uh, putting on an event? Or in June, I think, is when we're having the uh, Pennhurst one? Different group. Different group. Ghost Detectives versus? Coal Region Paranormal Team. Oh. You're so great. So what she's great. talking about is uh, in June 2nd and 3rd, Bob? Yeah. June 2nd and 3rd, Paracon 3 at the Pennhurst uh, State School, Hospital and School is, uh, you know, that is the uh, East Coast's largest paranormal conference. How many vendors do we looking at this year, Bob? A hundred vendors. What's the date of that? June 2nd and 3rd, I believe. First weekend in June. Yeah. Are, are you a contact person for that? Uh, technically, yeah. Okay. If you put in, <laughs> if you put in Penhurst Paracon in the search engine, you'll come up to the website or the Facebook page. Will you be doing uh, this year Bigfoot or uh, Flying Saucers? Well, yes, I'll have uh, MUFON back again and um, Bigfoot, yeah, we'll have one of the Bigfoot groups. I'm just not sure which one I'm going to bring, if I'm going to bring uh, Bob back or um, I'm going to talk to Eric a little bit, see if he'll journey from Western PA over to talk to us. But yes, we always, I'll do that. I will have a psychic back again to talk to us, won't I, Kelly? <laughs> Won't I tell you? Yeah. So, yes, I do do special things like that, and, and we'll do ghost photography is usually a good one, right? And we'll That's do my favorite. Like that. Right? <laughs> because of work. Yeah, but I usually bring in four or five guest speakers, and then the rest of the time I talk about ghost hunting and things like that. Yeah, but following your group, this is the first opportunity I actually had to attend. So. I'm glad you guys uh, decided to come down. I hope you come back. Um, any questions? Get out.